Hey everybody, Robert Dump, founder of Alt Top 10, and I'm here in uh, St. Ives, just about to uh, stroll up to the Barbara Hepworth uh, Museum and uh, have a little look around there so you can see what's in there. It's a fascinating place. So uh, this is St. Ives, so let's head off up to the uh, museum. So Easter school holidays at the moment in um, St. Ives, so the place is packed. So you've got these little, um, lovely little streets. So look, Barbara Hepworth basically. Uh, lived up here and had a studio up here so let's uh, wander up to it so you've got all these the little um you know fishing village essentially what it is although quite a big one and this is where the studio was down here at the end she walked past here for years not knowing it would be a place she could use as a studio she'd been looking for somewhere she could use and suddenly she found this place it's absolutely amazed also she actually bought a school of dance nearby to do other bigger works I just heard. But here we go, this is it. Barbara Hepworth Museum and Sculpture Garden. So let's go inside and have a look at it. Hello, you've got this amazing sort of huge wall here and inside is this sort of secret magical garden. You can see St. Isaiah, eh? you can see back up these sort of you know hills of the of the town that's right on the sea. Anyway, let's go inside and have a look. And here we are in the Barbara Hepworth Sculpture Garden. Um, if you haven't been here, it's in St. Ives and it's the most amazing place where you can see all her sculpture in the house she used to live in in St. Ives, where she worked. This is one of the most extraordinary pieces called Magic Stones. These giant, weird stones that have an energy running between them. It's quite a strange... Yeah strange piece it's also absolutely huge um, you know these are sort of you know full human size these giant stones they've got a weird sort of um almost sort of Aztec Indian vibe to them as well as a sort of um uh, sort of magical thing and it does relate a lot to the uh, the landscape you'll see around here if you go down to Zena on the way to Land's End. Anyway, we'll just have a quick stroll through the garden. Here you go, here's another one, the lovely sculptures with a sort of classic sort of hole jabbed into the face of it. This is uh, called Poised Form. Perfect marble on concrete base. And um, you can see it there. There it is on the base. What an extraordinary thing, look at that. We move on down here, you get a nice view of the uh, garden. As I said, this is literally where she lived, so all these different buildings here, carving will take place. Um, she even died here, actually. She, um, uh, she died in that room in a fire. Uh, having had some whiskey and a sleeping pill and a cigarette, which she would do every night. She had trouble sleeping. Kind of strange end to her, sort of mystical as well. This one, another extraordinary one, called Forms and Movement. Bronze from a concrete original. So lots of the bronze ones, which she did later, are from like concrete, chicken wire and plaster originals. Um, let me move on down here. Got another one. Look at that. all these things, so extraordinary. They are absolutely magical within this sort of extraordinary landscape that we're in anyway down here in St. Ives. Look at that, stunning. That one's called Cantate Domino. A wonderful name. And then you wander up here, we go into one of these little sort of workrooms. So. I'm assuming this would have been more of like a workroom. We've got another one as we head past on the way. This is Image Hopton Woodstone. Look at that. Stunning. And then if we go in here, this is like, um, so literally I think this is one of the rooms she'd have done the carving in. Um, this would have been the stone carving, not the wood carving. She did that in a different room inside. And you can get a little view out there of like all the seagulls and all the sense of this sort of amazing place she lived in. She'd been in St. Ives about 10 years before she actually moved in here, had no idea there was this place here, which was the end of a large 
estate and a bigger house that's up to the left hand side. This one here is called Square Forms, two sequences plaster. So that one's still plaster, so that may well have turned into a bronze, or maybe it never did end up as a bronze. But that's one of the sort of plaster versions. I think as is this one. And this one is Seaform Porthmere. Yes, that's another plaster one. Let me move around here. You've got this stunning one over here in the corner. Look at that. Rising right up into the sky. Look at it. Lovely. And that is the bride from the family of man. Wonderful stuff. And then if you turn around, you can get a look right back out. It just gives you a view over St. Ives and you can see the church down there and you can see and you'll probably see the sea and you can see some more of the sculptures and here are the seagulls oh, it's just an extraordinary spot isn't it quite a sort of weird magical place I'll have a little stroll on down through the garden so we've got a nice one here look at that it's a little sort of bronze one and obviously you know it's amazing how you can see the light and everything change as they come through the insides of these things. It's always lovely how that happens. Makutu, this is bronze from Lignum Vitae original. Look at that, and that's a nice thing actually about coming here. You can really walk around that piece. Look at the light coming through the center of it and the different shapes it makes as you rotate around it. And then you come around and look at it from the other side. Always a nice way to look at sculpture. Trying to go right around it. You can see some more of them as we wander up through the garden here. Nice one there. Look at that. Well, you can see through that sort of pierced section there. Come around here, have a quick glimpse of these bigger ones. Look at that huge one there, made out of. Actually made that one out of plaster, but actually made it actually. Um, Intriguingly enough, I had a chicken wire to start with. There's a little one down here, it's a bit like that bigger one we saw earlier. Called Six Forms. Yeah, an amazing sense of like a tension between these pieces as you look at them. And if we want to wander down this way, you can see um, like this big one here people taking photos of themselves in it. That's actually my family. <laughs> and, um, extraordinary one there, that actually looks like a sort of space alien. I can't help thinking lots of them do look like space aliens. Torso 2, that was called. A lot of them had these um, strings in them like this one here. Intriguing one, isn't it? And those strings going right through it. And the strings, the guy who was talking said that was like a, a tension. I, I think it's like a tension of the landscape. She feels the landscape existing for her and the energy is pulling and pushing within her as she looks at them. wave. Get a sense of that. A wave or eyeballs or all sorts of things all appearing as you look at it. Bronze form, that one's called. There's a nice little one up here we haven't looked at actually. Which um, my son keeps saying reminds him of like a G. A big G. Look at that. That's really cool. You can see it there, that's called Garden Sculpture, model for Meridian. Look at that, give you a nice sense of it. As you walk around it, get the sense of all those different shapes moving and rotating amongst themselves. Fascinating. Look at that, there you go, you get the sense of movement. It goes in and out and you can see these lovely textured edges to them. Gives you a real sense of you want to touch them. Barbara Edwards said her right hand was her hand for sculpting. 
It was a hard, rough hand, and the left hand was a sensitive one. And that was the one that was used to touch things and feel them. Here's a good view of St. Ives, which you can see out of the garden. See that church? Get all the sense of these places out there. And the seagulls flapping past. Come on down here into this uh, section of the garden here. And move on through these trees. It's like a magical garden. Here's another little piece we're looking at from behind. Let's wander through. And you got this. Look at that one with those extraordinary sort of two eyeballs. Almost like a face as you look at it. Extraordinary. Look at that. And you got this big, big one there. Quite an extraordinary big one, isn't it? Gigantic piece. A nice one here, like a giant ball, sphere with inner form. Oh, there is a little form inside that. I never realised it was called that before. And that's quite an intriguing. I'm quite sure what that inner form is. Can't tell. It's like a sort of another pierced creature, a pierced item. We got this lovely one with three holes here. She had triplets. And uh, the guy who was just showing us around said maybe the triplets helped build up the sense of things having three pieces in them. I wonder up here you can see that gigantic one again. Fascinating isn't it? Look at that, those massive holes. The guy who was just showing us around said that one day somebody climbed up to the top and sat in it after he encouraged them to make the most of uh, being part of it. This is a good one here, figure for landscape. Fascinating one, it's got a weird sort of sarcophagus and ghost-like feel to it. I always find that one quite extraordinary. I think it's that sense that some of these things are like alive as you look at them. Wandering around and here's a close-up of that giant one with the circles. And um, if you look in here, you can get a real sense of all the, um, get a sense of all the sort of made out of chicken wire. And there's somebody wandering through, my son. <laughs> and you look up here and you've got this lovely, look at all that texture on it, made out of chicken wire. Initially and then cast in bronze and basing stake, bizarrely enough. Absolutely bizarre. Look at that, there you go, right up to the top, nice. We'll have a little wander over here and you can see in uh, one of the carving studios down here. If you wander around, always like these bits here. You have a pier inside, you get a sense of people working on it. She was quite tough, people like Terry Frost were working on things. If they ever stopped carving, she came out to ask what had happened why nothing was being hammered out. Look at that amazing, beautiful sort of white and brown place. Bits of uh, stone here that you might want to work on. You can come up here, look inside, and see more of these things being made, being looked at. All these sort of plaster forms being produced. Stunning, isn't it? A little wander over, you get a nice view from here over the garden, over St. Ives. You can see the beach in the background. And you get a sense of this sort of community of artists that are here in the sea and the things all around them as they worked. There's a wild gold one here. Look at that, a sort of a flat pier circle. Shaft and circle. Fascinating. This is a little bit where the uh, rainwater reflects in the um, in the water. So the water reflects. You can't quite see it properly here, but it will reflect in the top of the bronze 
there and you can see this water juggling through. You actually have to fill the water up each day, the rainwater doesn't collect in it. But um, that gives a real funky vibe. Have a little stroll inside. It's a bit quieter in here, and there's loads of people looking and stuff. There you go, quick stroll through the Barbara Hepworth Sculpture Garden. Absolutely stunning place, 100% worth visiting. One of the most extraordinary um, sort of artist created uh, worlds you'll ever see. Absolutely stunning, mystical, and sort of mesmerizing, especially those magic stains at the end. Which is my favorite bit these magic stones, which have a kind of weird energy flowing out of them. So, as ever, like, subscribe, and uh, donate if you can. Our top 10 is safely self-funded, so if you can help us going, please donate. There we go, there's the magic stones bit to finish on. Okay, cheerio guys, bye, bye. Bomb